Instead of my usual intro, I will read every comment that said I should do a part two of the story. And I hope I see you people back in this comment section. Uh, if not, I will be very disappointed. We will start from the newest and we will reach the oldest one. So here we go. Bakugo's teddy bear. Part two? Please, if you can. Lana Marina. I need a part two. Ashley Pie, part two, please. Izzy Kimber, we need a part two, undoubtedly. Uh, something in Russian animation. Is there a part two? And I even answer to this one. Written, not recorded yet. Well, by now it is recorded. Uh, this one is by Yeah Girl Reni. Is there going to be a part two to this? Cause I'm interested in this one. AKA, I love your work. Please do keep it up and take breaks when you need it. Then one from Jada Shea Kyle Coyle. Now that's a tongue breaker. I love all of it. So what is there going to be a part two? Cause I want to know what happens next. Next one is by Ariana Cello. She says, no, I need a part two. Can please make a part two? This was a really good story. Please continue it because I want to know what happens next. Next one was by Lily Dean. She just says part two. Next one is Selena Ramirez. I have a very bad feeling about this part two. Oh dear. Next one was by Iri-chan. And she says, I am four hours late, but still here. And now I need to scroll a bit. I'm still scrolling. Still scrolling. Usually I delete these comments. Why are you scrolling down so far? And I'm scrolling more. Scrolling more, scrolling more. I don't know why you scrolled so far down, but we need a part two. Jesus Christ. Usually I delete these comments. And uh, could you please give my browser just a second to readjust itself? It just, okay, here we are. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. There it was. Now we have Floor White and she says, make a part two. I want to know if Bakugo is going to call and what's going to happen next. Next one was by Sweet Bean with a smiley face. OMG, I need a part two of this. Next one is Yamaru. I, I can't pronounce that. They have an emoji as an emo as, as an avatar. We need a part two. Next one is Opai Marissa. And she says, please tell me what this will have a part two. Then we have Aliana Contrer. Part two, please. Then Dagmara and then something in Russian. Part two, question mark. Then Last Trainer Bay. She says, I love this whole video. Ooh, ooh. Please make a part two. Ooh, ooh. Then Erica Haven, make a part two. Then I am bad stuff. Can there be a part two, please? I love the plot. I've never seen a, or heard anything like it. Then Angie Creeper 3, I want part two, please. Then Samara K. Lani. You should really make a part two on this one. Suzanne Martinez. I love the story. Can you please do a part two if you want to? Then Star Faye. She says, This needs a part two. It's so good. You're so good at this, I swear. And then I said, Hey, all the more reason to share the video around and watch my other videos for content just as good as this one. Yeah, I was a little smooth on this one. And then somebody said with the name Kelly G answer to that comment. I also agree for part two. Please. And lastly, Bia Ribeiro. This is as good as always. Can you please have a part two? And that's all of them. This was a four minute intro. Just making fun of people wanting a part two. You got your part two. Enjoy the show. It were two days since you and Nomu first explored the city past the sea. A magical moment with lots of shopping, new toys, games and movies. Until the boy you had met finally called you, you had actually started to get worried. With a grunt, Nomu had given you the phone while you were eating instant noodles you had brought from the city. Peasant food, Uncle Kurugiri had called it. Hey, 
said the familiar voice on the phone. It's me, Bakugo. Your, uh, uh friend? Gave me your number, remember? He sounded worried. He was probably afraid he'd called the wrong number. You smiled and answered with a gentle, Hello, yes, I remember you. Katsuki, right? He chuckled. Was just wondering if you, like, want to go out on a date. You suppressed a squeal and quickly placed your hand on the phone's mic. Normal! You shouted. He has me out on a date! The monster grunted in acknowledgement. Yes, of course, you said happily. When? You two went silent for a moment. You could practically feel his nervousness. He clearly didn't think he gets as far. Uh, how does today sound? Like, later today. After I'm done with school. Uh, we can go to the mall. You looked at Nomu. We're going on a date today! Your monster made a noise somewhere between a grunt and a growl. Clearly he wasn't fully approving of this. Worried. Lady become... Her. He said. But you already had the phone back on your ear. Uh, honestly, I never did this before. So, like... Do I come over to your house? Or do you come over to mine? Asked Bakugo with an awkward chuckle. Pretty sure you can't reach my house unless you know my uncle. So... I come to you. Where should I be? And when? Uh, school's over at 3. I can get a pass to go home and then I'll be there at 3.30. Uh, so... He thought for a minute. Pick me up at 4.30 and he told you his address. Uh, also, please don't be late. Otherwise my mom will think that I'm pranking her. You giggled. <laughs> See you soon. You said before hanging up. Your first date? What should you wear? Without thinking, you rushed to your room and began throwing the clothes around. Mostly various dresses. In fact, you only had these pretty frilly dresses. Nomu slowly made his way up the stairs behind you. And when he entered your room, you showed him the dress you had picked. What about this one? You asked. The monster tilted his head. It was a short white dress, perfectly fit for a summer walk. No. Need to get dirty. You raised an eyebrow. Foot. Foot dirty. Uh, of course. You turned around and back into your closet. More dresses flying through the room. One landed on Nomu's head. He carefully pulled it off and then stared at it. It was the same black dress you had worn on your 12th birthday. A frilly black dress that almost looked like a Lolita costume. He blinked and then threw the dress at you. Not with much force, but enough to catch you off guard. Hey, wh what was that for? Yonomu shrugged and his cracked lips went up into a toothy grin. Oh, you want me to wear this? The monster nodded. It was an old dress for sure. He had only worn it once four years ago. But now you were way too intrigued on whether or not it still fit to think about it. You quickly closed the door to your closet and threw on the dress. It was a little tight around the chest area, and maybe a little short. The cloth just barely covered your knees. You looked at yourself in the mirror. Maybe it was because you were a teen, but you liked it. With a smile, you opened the closet door. How do I look? Your Nomu tilted his head from left, then to the right, and then gave you a thumbs up. Lady, look like 
lady. Isn't wearing black on a date bad luck or something? You said while going through an assortment of hats. The question was more for yourself, since you knew Nomu wouldn't answer that, since it was a little too complicated for him. But then you were surprised by a different voice. Madame, if I may insert myself into this discussion. You shrieked and turned around. Yanko Korogiri stood in the doorframe, his arms crossed. May I ask what you are hiding behind my back? All right. You haven't told him yet. I want to say none of your business, but I also rely on you to get to my date, so... Yeah, I'm going on a date. Could you pretty please teleport me there? Korakiri blinked. Date? When? How? Who? You giggled. His name is Bakugo Katz- Bakugo! shouted Korogiri in surprise. Uh, do you know him? Your shadowy uncle turned around, mumbling something. I need to make a call, but I'm sure I can take the madame to her date. Your eyes widened in surprise. You have prepared a twenty-minute sob story to convince him. I'll be back, madame. In the meantime, Remember to wear a hat to protect your skin from the sun. <laughs> of course, uncle. Then the dark figure left. In the end, it had taken you an hour to get all of your clothes ready. It seems your uncle had gotten the green light to let you go, as he was happily whistling while cleaning the dishes, while you were explaining the details. When the clock at exactly 4.30, Kurugiri teleported you and Nomu to the doorstep of the Katsuki household. Before your uncle vanished in a puff of smoke, he said, Just like last time, go to our base when you're done. Tomura Shigaraki also wishes that you tell him every detail. He's very excited about this opportunity. You were about to ask him what he meant with opportunity, but the shadowy man was already gone. You looked back. Nomu was idly standing a few feet away on the sidewalk. He was wearing a black leather coat with its hood pulled up. Then you turned back towards the door, your heart racing with anticipation. And with a shaking hand, he rung the doorbell. That's her! You heard Bakugo shout. What do you mean it's her? Shouted a female voice. I told you a girl was coming over! He sounded really angry. I thought you were joking! A few seconds later, a woman that looked very much like Bakugo opened the door. Hello. You said with a bright smile. The woman blushed and turned around. How the hell did you do that? She shouted. Then she looked back at you. Sorry, sweetie, he isn't ready yet. Come on in. She said and made room for you. Thank you, you said as you stepped inside. You had never been in a different person's home before. Obviously, this place was much smaller than your mansion. It was neatly packed with various things. It honestly made you feel cozy. And a soft smell of curry wafted from what you assumed was the kitchen. Bakugo was making his way down a flight of stairs when his mom's face turned red like a tomato. Bakugo was still wearing his school uniform. You are not wearing that! shouted his mom. And you swallowed a giggle. What do you mean, you hag? I look perfectly fine. His mom gestured to you, then to him, then back to you, and then back to him. At a normal volume, his mom sputtered, I have no idea how you did that, and if you don't behave yourself at your best, I will call for a postnatal abortion. A what? You wondered. 
Suddenly a man with brown hair appeared for a door next to you. And with a gentle smile, he said, Come over. These two will be at it for a while. You nodded and followed the man into Bakugo's living room. He sat you down on a comfy looking sofa while he sat down on a couch at your opposite. I'm sorry. My wife can be a little hothead. His voice was very calming. It's fine. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with parents. Is it always this loud? You asked. Bakugo's dad shook his head. Ah, uh, yes and no. Right now it's mostly excitement for two reasons. Uh, for one, Bakugo hasn't come home in months due to him living in dorms at a school. And... Uh, his dad paused. You. He never invited to go home. He's a hothead just like his mother. So we assumed he would be in his very late twenties when he would finally be calm enough to ask someone out and then actually get a date. Bakugo's mom now came in with a soft smile on her lips. Hey, sweetie, he will be here in a minute. She turned around and shouted into the hallway. Or else! His mother sighed and sat down on the armrest of her husband's couch. How did you two meet? She asked with a smile. I was at the mall with Nomu, and he just approached me and asked me for my number. His dad sighed. Oh, that's my boy. But his mom's brows were furrowed. Who is Nomu? She asked. Uh, he is a servant my father created with his quirk. He is waiting outside. He never leaves my side. <laughs> it was hell convincing him earlier to get him to stay put while I am in here. He is very worried. Huh. Bakugo's mom sighed. While we are at the topic of quirks, what's yours? She asked. You twiddle with your thumbs. Uh, my dad forbid me to talk about it. The topic of your quirk was very sensitive, since it had killed your mother when it first manifested. Realizing the sensitivity of the subject, his dad quickly interjected. Uh, Mitsuki, sweetie, why don't you check up on our son? The woman was about to nod when the door swung open. There stood Bakugo with a scowl. He was wearing an open black leather jacket with a white shirt under it, black pants and fitting black shoes. His hair, while still messy, seemed to have been attempted to be tamed and then halfway abandoned. <laughs> you look like a manga protagonist. You giggled while his parents just sighed with relief. Well, at least she likes it, mumbled Bakugo's mother under her breath. With a blush, Bakugo approached you and held his hand out. Uh, you ready? He muttered. With a gentle smile, you took his calloused yet soft hand. Of course, Bakugo. He blushed harder and let you outside. While you two were approaching the sidewalk, you couldn't help but look back. Both of Bakugo's parents had their noses pressed against the window, intently looking at the two of you, probably still thinking this was all an elaborate prank. Ignore them, he growled, and you returned your attention towards him. When you reached the sidewalk, Nomu approached, staying a few feet away. Um. Don't worry about him. I told Nomu that I will be very disappointed in him if he ruins this for me. After all, you giggled and smiled. This is my first date ever. With a heavy blush, Bakugo answered, Ugh, mine too. Then he gave a nervous chuckle. So, uh, what do you want to do first? <laughs> 